Now then, YouTube, I'm the Toff Man, and welcome back to some more Football Manager 2016. Of course, we are back for the Stubbins Challenge Cup quarterfinal against Hartfield. But before we do, I'm going to go through exactly what's happened between now, uh, between now and last episode. So let's go and take a look at our schedule. You can see that we've pretty much won nearly every game. The only problem is Sporting Elite, we lost 2-0. We got absolutely outplayed. But look at this, very disappointed in the amount of shots on target we managed to get in that game. Very, very disappointed indeed. And it led me to think, I think I need to buy some more players. You know, because why not? So let's go and take a look at the transfers, guys. And the transfer history. So we've got in quite a few, um, well, I say quite a few. We've got, I think, three new players. Have we got three new players in since Robert Bradbury was our last one? So Callum Jennings is a central striker. He is currently a uh, current ability of two stars. Is really just backup because we had a lot of problems with uh, strikers getting injured and we really only had one striker uh, left. So I needed more strikers. Callum Jennings came in. Mac Meller also came in as well. Again, just back up. No real, you know, he's not really going to get anywhere. But Martin Barnett is a very, very decent player indeed. In fact, he's five-star current ability, five-star potential ability. His acceleration's pretty good. His pace is okay. His finishing is good for this level, though. Um, we've only played him in one single match at the moment. Um, and he hit the woodwork twice, would you believe? Didn't score, but it was only the first half that he came on. Martin Barnett, but we will be using him, I think, when we're coming into this game about the uh, with the team. So let me crack backwards here. There it is. Mike Barnett starts the game. Christian Brown will be on the bench. I'm just going to do a bit of sorting around here because uh, not entirely happy with how this is. Ricardo Brown. So we've got a defensive centre. I'd rather have a defensive like that, for instance, so I can get two places covered at once, should I need to. Max Morris is on the bench, but we don't really use a midfield centre player. So what I would rather have is somebody who can play a multitude of different places. So in this case, it's going to be Phil Watt. Do I really want that, though? Sweeper, defensive left? I suppose I could use him, really, in defensive mid. I'm, that's another place I'm looking to strengthen, because at the moment, Dave Harrop is injured. He got injured in the last match. He's going to be out for three weeks with a twisted knee. So, unfortunately, we're down on defensive mid fit mids, and I don't have any other defensive mids other than the two that we've got. This particular tactic that I've had before seems to be working very, very well for me this season, uh, so I'm keeping it as is for this moment. But we've got a game against Hartfield to get through in the Stubbins Challenge Cup quarterfinal. Remember, if we do win this one, of course, I'm going to show you the semi-final, but if I don't, I will skip forward all the way towards the end of the season. Let's get on with it. And here we go, kicking off the game against Hartfield. So, while this is going on in the background, guys, I'm going to talk about uh, the Euros. And, of course, Portugal did win the final. I knew that this was going to happen when it came to the semi-final and they beat... Um, uh, and they beat Wales, I thought, the buggers, they're going to turn up and start playing right at the end of the fucking tournament. And this calls into question, of course, um, whether or not it was right to do this sort of, oh, and that was really close, and unfortunately, it looks like Hartfield have scored the first goal there. Mark Flood has whacked that into the back of the net. Uh, but as I was saying, guys, um, it calls into question whether or not the decision to make it uh, bigger, the tournament. And of course, Portugal would not have gone through to the next round of the, uh, you know, of the Euros because they finished third in the group. They finished third. And it calls into question, as I said, guys, whether or not um, it's worth doing that. And Portugal played absolutely crap in their group stages. But of course... In the knockout stages, they played a lot better. Majid with the ball in. It's going to drop there. No, it's not. It's going to be a foul, and it's going to be a penalty. Moss with the foul, it looked like. It is going to be a Jeff. There's no Jack Ward to take Jeffs nowadays. I've got no idea who is taking Jeffs. It's number seven, who I think is off Ricardo Brown. Is it Ricardo Brown? Is it good old Ricardo? Is it good old Ricardo? It's Gwyn, Sam Gwyn, actually, who oh squeezes it under the goalkeeper. That was so close to being saved there. But it's brought us back into this tie, and it's won it all. We've had two shots all game, two on target. Hartfield have had five shots, but luckily for us, only the one on target. We're getting a lot of away games at the moment. Slightly annoying. Uh, but yeah, it calls into question, guys, whether or not it's right to be able to do that. Portugal grew into the tournament, but... It's for me, guys, for me, I don't like the fact that the uh, the third place team could qualify. Uh, and the main reason for this is it kind of 
It, I mean, it's great for smaller clubs. Oh, Barnett, yes! With a first goal for the club, Martin Barnett, brilliant brilliant header there the great ball in from Gunter and what a guy he is now um, top uh, assists of all time in the Mid Sussex Football League Division 3 the previous record was 7 assists he's now got 8 well he's got 9 now I think no this is not the league is it it's the cup so fair enough oh no straight from the kick off this is never good this is never good guys Ekrem Yilmaz Ekrem Yilmaz should I say up towards Withers ball into the middle Oh, you should have got that, Ginge. Well, it's going to get picked up here by Bradbury. And Barnett's on a run. Barnett. Is he going to do anything with it? He's gone down the left. Whips it across. And that falls for Joe Gunter. It hit the post. Barnett's original cross slash shot. I don't know what it was. Hit the post. Went underneath the goalkeeper. And, of course, it was um, Joe Gunter who'd gone in the middle there to cover from Barnett. Oh, look at that. Gunter into the back of the net. It's 3 1. Four shots, four on target. But anyway, as I was saying, guys, um, the littler clubs had more of a chance of getting through to the knockout stages. You know, t teams like Iceland and stuff like that. Not necessarily. Oh, for fuck's sake. Phil, what it is. That's really annoying to lose um, Gareth Gale. He's a decent defender as well for us. But as I was saying, um, to teams like Iceland, even though Iceland finished, was it second in their group or top of their group? No, I think it was second, wasn't it? And Poland, it, yeah, Portugal finished third. But either which way, um, that guy's... I'm disappointed that Portugal managed to make through. I mean, I'm disappointed per purely on a personal level because I really don't like Portugal as a, as a team. I hate Pepe. I hate when Ronaldo's playing because all you hear is bloody commentators going and jizzing in the pants. And I'm sick. Oh, Robert Bradbury. No, it's not Robert. It's Ricardo. No, it is Robert Bradbury. Robert Bradbury. Uh, Ricardo Brown isn't even on the fucking pitch. I don't even know why I'm going on about Ricardo because he's not even on the pitch. Bradbury, Moss with the pass back. It was a terrible pass back and it looks as if we're going to go flying through to the next round after five shots, five on target. An absolute clinical finishing today. But yeah, if there were the old rules, Portugal wouldn't have even made it to the next stage. And it changed the way that teams play in the groups. Slovakia sat back that entire match against England. Just went all on... Oh, that's a good save there by O'Neill. Brilliant. But would it It would have made a huge difference. They were in third. Slovakia were in third. They would have gone all hell for lever to try to beat England. And that, to me, it just changes tournament football. There is a group stage. I know it's a, it's a rush to get through to the next round. And you have to be a decent team. You have to have... Um, Oh, that was a brilliant finish there from Withers. And they're back into the game, guys. Hartfield, in fairness, they've had 14 shots in this thir in this first half. It's been absolutely crazy. Let's just, um, in the second half, I'll drop it down to, uh, not control, but I'll drop it down to counter-attacking, just so we can try and keep the ball a little bit more. Um, yeah, but... Slovakia wouldn't have sat back that entire match against England. They were happy for that draw because they knew they'd get through to the next round in third place. And it kind of... The group stage, it, it made them kind of boring, I do have to say. There was nothing really much going on about it. And I suppose it does allow teams to grow into the tournament rather than being good straight off. But I don't know. I don't know. Let's start the second half anyway, guys, and get on with this. So, let me go to this. I'm going to go counter-attacking, and I'm also going to do retain possession. So, we're going to do mixed on retain possession, try to keep the ball a little bit more, and uh, see where we can go from there. But, I say try to keep the ball a little bit more. I don't know why I'm trying to keep the ball if I'm on counter-attack. That just doesn't make any sense. Tyler Guy. Gunter. Brilliant with the ball, he is. Gunter's a great, great winger, I have to say. Joe Gunter with the ball across. Here's Barnett. Not managed to get through, through here. Sam Gwynn, who's been a mainstay in the team for, for quite a while now, when other players have come and gone. Gwynn has stayed here for quite a few seasons now. Granger. Bradbury. Out towards Nassim Majid. And that's 5-2. That's a brilliant finish from Nassim Majid. It's his fourth goal of the season. And, of course, he scored in this game, um, in the Stubbins Challenge Cup, in the last episode. I'm pretty sure he did. So Nassim Majid um, loves uh, being on YouTube. 
<laughs> so he likes to slip in with a goal every now and then. Does good old Nassim Majid. So we're now 5-2 ahead with all of our shots. Six shots, six on target. But we have kind of stopped Hartfield from getting shots. And this, I suppose that's a good thing. Mind you, we've only been going for five more minutes. Good ship. Oh, and that was a terrible, terrible save there from the goalkeeper. Or at least an attempt at a save. 5-3, Hartfield are back into this. Um, I think that's 15 shots, six on target now. I don't think it's actually uh, updated here, but... I think that might have come off the go the defender last, actually, Brennan. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, I think it did look. It's an own goal. It's classed as an own goal. I'm going to wait till the 60th minute, start messing things around. But what I really want to do is try to keep them away. Oh, comes back to Crawford with his hook. Oh, that looked like a foul to me. It's in. It's 5-4. How on earth is this happening? Right, we're going to have to sort this out. We're going to have to control the game a little bit more now. But I think what we'll do is we will do it mixed. And I think this will do better for us. Uh, so let's continue on. 5-4, what a game. They're back into this. We, they were 5-2 down. This isn't right. We've got to sort this out with a substitution, I think. Because somebody's not playing here, and it's one of the central defenders. Kevin Brennan's having an absolute shocker. We're going to bring on Simon White here. Um, and I can't really do much more, because at the moment I've got... I've had two injuries. Well, I've had one injury and one substitution, so I'm down to my last substitution. My attackers are doing really well. My defence, however, is uh, doing little to be known. 18 shots from Hartfield. This is absolutely mental. I don't, I don't want to change anything it's through, through fear of uh, messing around here. But we're getting back into uh, the possession game a little bit more. But can it go to 5 all? That'd be absolutely crazy. Or can it be 6 4? And Nassim Majid with the ball in towards Barnett, but it's get comes down towards Withers, who's going to go on the counter attack. It's Dawson. Tries to spread the play. Good ship does manage to keep it in. A long ball out towards Ekrem Yulmaz. Still. Oh, come on, you've got to get on him here. Hook out towards Yulmaz again. It's gone towards Tyler Guy, who's going to keep this in. Tries to get rid of it. Comes down towards Crawford instead. Dawson. Ball in towards Hook. It's going to be 5-all. I've, I've got a feeling in my bones. Yilmaz! It's 5-all. I can't believe it. Look at the shots, though. This is why they deserve to be back in this game. It's a high-scoring game. And um, I just can't control I can, can't. I can't contain them. It's the issue. I'm trying to keep the ball. It's not working. We've got to think about this, guys. We've got to think about this. We are losing a pretty much uh, a big amount of fitness here. Mark Page is really is not very good, I have to say. Mark Page. The thing is, I can't bring him off because I don't have anyone to bring him off for. I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring on Christian Brown for the last 10 minutes and we will change things up once this pops up. Okay, so we're going to go to the instructions here. I think we'll go route one. Will we, we will... Do we want to clear it into the flanks? Uh, we'll go attacking, that's for sure. So go route one. Don't retain possession. Okay. And then what we will do is we'll change that to overload. Well, we have to. I mean, we're so far down that I think the route one is the only thing that we can do. So off the um, kickoff here, we seem to have a... Uh, another highlight, fingers crossed it's ours, Mark Page, who's really not done great at that right back position Bradbury, oh look at the space now Christian Brown, he's only just come on the pitch Christian Brown, it's Bradbury again, Christian Brown bit of space, oh come on Christian Brown, the lack of composure there, disappointing to say the least, Christian Brown could have won it for us, it looks like it's going to go to extra time, it needed oh is it, is it, is it going to go to extra time we're on overload. Oh, no, Yilmaz has nicked the ball in the middle of the pitch. Good ship. And we just can't get hold of the ball. They're absolutely... They're overrunning us in this part of the pitch. And that's the problem. When you've got three attacking midfielders... Oh, Page, for fuck's sake. I'm dropping that cunt. I really am dropping him. I'm sorry, Page, but you've just absolutely shot yourself in the foot there. I'm stuck now. I'm really, really stuck. So Phil Watt can play left. He'll have to play right. Surely he can, can he play right as well? Well, apparently he can play there. There's a little green arrow on there. Gwyn, Granger, K. 
can't Granger play there? Yes, he can. So we'll bring that back. We'll bring Grin on there. We're going to have to keep it as is. And we're going, to, we're going to go into extra time. Man down. This is just disgraceful, Payich. Absolutely disgraceful. Watt tries to get rid of the ball. Crawford still. And then Watt gets rid of it eventually. And it does go out for a throw-in. It looks like it's going to be the end of this game, though. We're going to go into extra time for this. Oh, fucking Payich. I swear to God. End of 90 minutes. There's nothing really that I can do. Especially now I've lost a player. I think what we're going to have to do... Let me see if I can do this. I'm going to drop Bradbury down a little bit here. I'm going to drop Gunter down and Nassim Majid. I'm going to leave Christian Brown up there all by himself. And we're going to start extra time. Try to give some more people in midfield. Because we're getting overrun in these areas. And that's because we just don't have enough players there um, to keep the ball. But this is where I need players along this line. O'Neill, ball up there, absolutely cracking it, long Gwyn, Bradbury, towards Gunter, come on, and one more push now, Tyler Guy towards Christian Brown, it gets intercepted, but Christian Brown's managed to get through, he's in the box, Christian Brown scored, it's 6-5 to Kima and Hassocks, Christian Brown's 15th goal of the season, and on as a substitute, makes the right run at the right time, I thought he may... Just not do it. The uh, defender's getting across there, but it seems to take a little nick off the defender, actually, to um, disguise Addo. We're going to have to change that from overload now. I'm going to do that to a counter-attacking style. I think that it kind of does um, allow us to do that. It's Tyler Guy, Joe Gunter, into the middle now towards White. Simon White. Bradbury, look at the space for Christian Brown again. On his left boot, he's done it. He has surely done it 7-5 after extra time. It's like schoolboy football. Christian Brown come off the bench to score two goals in extra time. Not a bad thing. Look at the defenders absolutely all over the place. And Christian Brown, devastating left boot. It doesn't matter how many defenders are around him. He can still manage to find the back of the net. 7-5 to Kima and Hassocks. Oh, that's fantastic. We're just about to go into um, halftime of extra time, but it's not before... Something is going to happen. Here's Granger. Tyler Guy. Out towards Joe Gunter. Is it going to be 8-5? Christian Brown's through again. Can he get a hat-trick in extra time? Oh, and Addo with a big left hand there to keep it out from the back of the net. And I thought Christian Brown might get a hat-trick after coming on as a substitute. That is absolutely crazy, guys. But our attacking side of the, of the, the game, Robert Bradbury, Joe Gunter and Christian Brown, absolutely brilliant. Sam Gwynn as well from the back there. Let's start the second half of extra time. And it looks as if we have managed to come into this game a little bit more. Um, but Hartfield, we've stopped Hartfield from getting those chances. And I think that's what's the key. Bringing the, uh, the defenders back. Um, uh, sorry, bringing the defenders back. Bringing the attacking three. Bringing those back. Um, and leaving Rick, uh, um, Christian Brown up there by himself. Seems to have made some sort of difference uh, to this game. Jump with the ball over the top, or tries to get it over the top. Here's Dawson. There's the ball again. Tyler guys managed to keep it. O'Neill whacks it forwards, and there is a full-time whistle. 7-5 after extra time. A 5-all after full-time. Maybe the tactics changed, made a difference. Maybe they didn't. I don't know, but 7-5 is fantastic. Let's continue on and uh, see who we managed to get in the Stubbins Challenge Cup semi-final. Was that the semi-final or was that the quarter-final? No, that was the quarter-final. Let's see what we managed to get. So dismissal, definitely going to miss me with a warning. Um, Payich has been absolutely terrible. He really has been terrible in these last few games. I'm going to take him off. I'm going to start looking for another right-back because we're missing. We are missing a right-back ever since what's-his-face left. Um, I can't remember what his name is now. Ever since he left, we are missing a decent right back. Stubbins Challenge Cup semi final draw. Let's see who we've managed uh, to pull out and see if we if we're looking to see like who we've got left. So who's on either side of the draw as well? Um, if they're in the same league or if they're in a league, I don't think they can be in a league above us. I think that this is the the last league that can be. So let's have a gander. God, look at all this. Test the Challenge Cup quarter final as well. Tulloch rejects Broadwater. Kieran Hassex uh, and Hartfield blitz the record for goals in a match. The previous one was 5 2. Um, 
highest scoring game, yeah, 5-2. And 7-5 has absolutely destroyed that. Absolutely destroyed it. Let's go ahead and continue on to the Stubbins Challenge Cup semi-final draw. And that is here. So who's left? Well, let's draw all teams. Can't be bothered to wait. We, we've got uh, the Mid-Sussex 4, Mid-Sussex 5, Mid-Sussex 4, and we've got Sporting Elite, who we've lost to this season so far. Uh, we've got them away from home again, so we're still... So, we're missing out on all the money in these cups. We really are. All of the, um, the attendance money. Because we're always away. It's really annoying. But either which way, we're against Sporting Elite in the semi-final. That is going to be... When is it going to be? Schedule. Um, just two league games, and we've got the Challenge Cup semi-finals against Sporting Elite. Um, I think what I will do is either skip over the... No, because this, this might be a decent game. We, draw, we drew against Sporting Elite, and we lost against them. So we haven't beaten them this season at all. So playing them in the Cup seems like a decent uh, episode. So I'll go ahead and do that. It shouldn't be too much of a wait between this and next episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, please, please, please go ahead and uh, let me know if you have. I can't believe this. I'm going to try to look for another defensive right as well. Um, we do have Anthony Secure actually, but he's only one star. I really want to try to build uh, the team as, as high as I can. So you can see here, if we go into the tactics, five-star Martin Barnett, and I think we could, should be able to get some uh, other players as well. I've, I've got people, if we have a look, guys, I've got people roaming around. I've got uh, assignments going on at the moment for a defensive midfielder, first team defensive midfielder. We've managed to find four people so far. Stephen Babb, Tom Graham, Daniel Fairclough and Charlie Draper. Um, Rockanori. <laughs> We've managed to find some decent players there, but I'm keeping my eyes open and uh, we'll see what comes up in the future. But if you enjoyed this episode, please do go ahead and leave a like and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, I'm the Topman. Thank you very much for watching and as always, stay safe.